All right, guys, my name is Shervin. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about the tax-free savings account and learn how you can start investing and earning a sizable passive income by properly utilizing your TFSA. Now, anytime you start investing with a broker, you have the option of choosing a normal account or a registered account, which is an account that is registered with the government so that you don't have to pay taxes on your gains. These accounts are also referred to as tax sheltered accounts, and there are a number of different ones available in Canada, but the most prominent ones are the TFSA, tax-free savings account, and the RSP, the registered retirement savings plan. Now in this video, we're gonna focus mostly on the TFSA, but if you're interested in learning about the other ones, including the RSP, feel free to check out my other videos. Now, the fact that the TFSA account is tax sheltered means that anytime you gain any profit on your investments within this account, you're not going to be taxed on it, which is a massive advantage when it comes to your investment strategy. It is also important to note that despite being called a savings account, the TFSA is not just a savings account where you put your cash and you just wait for a minimal amount of profit to come in every single year. You want to actively invest that money and you have the option of investing it into any stock, mutual fund, bonds, ETFs, what have you. Essentially, think of it as a different account where you can invest into anything you want. It's just that everything you gain is tax sheltered and you don't have to pay taxes on it. Now, of course, there's more detail to this and there are specific types of investments that you want to put into your TFSA compared to your RRSP or your other accounts in order to make sure you see the maximum amount of growth in the shortest period of time. And if you watch till the end of this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how you should be strategizing your investment and what you should be putting into your TFSA compared to your other accounts in order to see that maximum amount of growth. Now, there is one thing that everybody needs to do before they start investing, and that is to smash the subscribe button down below and join the family. On a serious note though, if you enjoy this video, I make videos like this where I talk about investments, personal finance, personal banking, stuff like that all the time. So if you enjoy videos like that, make sure to subscribe to see all the new videos that I put out when they come out. And of course, every subscriber makes a big difference for me, so I really appreciate the support. Now, with that said, let's get right into what types of investments we want to put into our TFSA compared to our other accounts. And we're going to start by talking about stocks. Now, generally speaking, there are two types of stocks, growth stocks and dividend stocks. Now, growth stock is a stock that grows in value at a steady rate and it grows over a long period of time. Examples of this would be Google, Facebook, Apple, Disney, stocks that grow over a long period of time and they always trend upwards. Now, the dividend stocks would be stocks where they don't necessarily grow all that much over a long period of time. Maybe there's not that much demand for them. Maybe they just don't expand that much as a business. That being said, they still want to attract investors. So in order to do that, they have to offer something else in order to entice investors to come in and invest their own money. So the way they do it is by offering dividends. Now, dividends are essentially portions of profit that companies give out to the investors in order to keep them invested into their company. An example of this would be Canadian Utilities. Now, that's a really good dividend stock where you receive 4% back on your investments every single year paid out quarterly. So essentially, every single quarter, you're receiving about 1% of your investment in the form of dividends. So if you, let's say, have 100 shares of Canadian Utilities priced at, let's say, $30 a share, you have $3,000 invested. So every single quarter, you're receiving $30 in the form of dividends. Now, the key difference between growth stocks and dividend stocks is when it comes to taxes. Because guess what? If you just buy something and it goes up in value, you're not actually gaining any profit on it until you actually sell that asset. Think of it this way, if you buy a watch for $1,000 and now all of a sudden that watch is worth $10,000, well, it doesn't matter. You still have the watch. You haven't sold it, right? You haven't made any profit on it. You will only make a profit on that watch if you go out and sell it. So as long as you haven't sold it, it doesn't matter what everyone else is buying or selling it for. It's your watch and you bought it for $1,000. That's all that matters. That being said, dividends work a little bit differently. Think of dividends as if you own a company and the company is paying you a portion of their profit every single year, right? So you're earning some sort of income through that asset. That's where the difference comes in because unlike growth stocks, where you don't have to pay taxes until you actually sell them, with dividends, you're receiving a payment every single quarter, which you can be taxed on. And this is where the TFSA comes in handy because guess what? With a tax sheltered account like the TFSA, you don't have to pay any taxes on the dividends that you earn every single quarter from your investments. So this is why it's very important for us to put 
all of our dividend stocks into our TFSA instead of putting it into our normal accounts, which in turn means that we want to make sure we don't put all our growth stocks into our TFSA because, you know, we have a limited contribution. Room. We can't just have as many investments as we want in our TFSA. So it's best if we take our growth stocks and we put it into normal accounts. We don't have to pay taxes until we actually sell them. And we put all of our other investments, like our dividend investments, into our TFSA, where we don't have to pay taxes because they are in a tax sheltered account. Now, another key factor that you want to be aware of when you're purchasing dividend stocks is whether they are Canadian dividend stocks or US dividend stocks. Because whereas with Canadian dividend stocks, you don't end up paying any taxes if you put them into your TFSA, with US dividend stocks, you have to pay a US withholding tax, even if they are in a tax sheltered account like the TFSA. In fact, the only account where you can avoid this US withholding tax is the RSP. So we can talk about that more in the RSP video, but for now, just keep in mind that you don't want to put any US dividend stocks into your TFSA account, and you just want to stick to Canadian dividend stocks. Now I'm going to give you some examples of good Canadian dividend stocks where they provide you good amounts of dividends and are good, stable, long-term investments as well. So the likes of Canadian Utilities, BMO, TD, and Enbridge are stocks where they actually provide you good amounts of dividends and are good long-term growing stocks as well, so that you don't have to worry about losing your investments at all. And if you're interested in getting good indexes or ETFs of Canadian dividend stocks, then I would suggest VDY and XCI, which are my picks for the best selections of Canadian dividend stocks. So just to quickly recap, when it comes to your TFSA, you want to make sure you have investments that can help you avoid paying taxes every single year on things like dividends. So essentially, you want to make sure you put your growth stocks outside of your TFSA and you put your dividend stocks inside your TFSA. Moreover, you want to make sure you have Canadian dividend stocks rather than US dividend stocks in order to avoid paying US withholding taxes. Also, it's very important to always diversify your portfolio and invest across different things so that if one of your investments, for whatever reason, doesn't end up doing all that well, your other investments can carry you forward regardless. All right, guys, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that quick breakdown of how you want to start investing into your TFSA. Now, let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm always happy to answer your questions down in the comment section down below. And feel free to check out my other videos where I talk about other accounts and other types of investments as well. So that's about it for now. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.